Master Tells Stories, Part 2 of 2, on Between Master and Disciples, given in English on August 23, 2007, in Paris, France. Peace for Ukraine or Ukraine. Good night, baby. Have wonderful dreams. Heaven love you, and I love you. Actually, it's getting better, you know. Um, even the pop is helping somebody in Peru. I had he done that before? I mean, personally, like that. It's the first time I heard it, but maybe I didn't hear much before. Normally they just, you know, like, uh, maybe they have it over there, they do something or not do it. But this time the Pope is sending his aid to Peru. Huh? The Pope. We didn't hear about that. No, we didn't. You didn't? No. You work on SNTV, you didn't read it? <laughs> no. That was on Flying News. I found it for you. <laughs> I haven't seen it for a few days. <laughs> no, it was when you were still there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I guess when you're cooking in the kitchen, you don't eat everything, huh? Mm. Uh, yeah, I, I saw it on TV. You know? He sent in his aid wow. to Peru. At that time, he said he was going to send his aid to Peru. He's probably sent it already, yeah? Just after we did it, after after our association groups. Yeah. I heard that he sent some aid. That's a good sign. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, he's been trained in his school and up to now and trying to do his best, but uh, it's a difficult position, eh? You can't move too much. And uh, once you're in that position, <laughs> you can't change too much. Just stay there and be a holy father. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'd like to exchange anything for that position. Nope. <laughs> because it's not a very real life. It's not real, you know. You just study the doctrine, yeah. And then uh, you'll go out and preach it, you know. I mean, interpret that or repeat the doctrine. And day by day like that, and then somehow you get to the top and you're holy. <laughs> And they said, you finished. <laughs> Once you're holy, you finished. <laughs> you know, you can't do much. Yeah. There's some short, short stories about that, nice stuff, yeah. Okay, there's another story. Oh, this is in uh, Sufi teachings. Yeah. Oh, there was a man they call him uh, a crazy guy, and uh, he had never been to church, or prayer, congregation, or done anything so holy like that. Yeah. So the people felt very sorry for him. So they uh, gathered together and decided they had to really induce him to go into the prayer, holy congregation. Uh, okay, he went there, but uh, as soon as the leader of the prayer started to recite, the madman started to uh, bellow like an ox person, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> and, and the people who dragged him there feel very, very <laughs> uh, bad about it. <laughs> so. <laughs> they were shaking their heads, thinking, this man is too mad to be uh, of any <laughs> good, to convert him into anything. It's not possible at all to convert him into anything because he's too mad. So they drag him out. Yeah? And afterward, after the congregation <laughs> and prayer ceremony finished, they still have a little compassion. So they came and tried to teach him teach the madman something. And they said to him, you, 
You really have no idea about God? Huh? Ah, that you should make such a noise, uh, like a cow, person. <laughs> <laughs> In the middle of a holy prayer congregation. <laughs> Why did you do that? The madman say, I was only doing what the prayer leader was doing. Because when he intoned the prayers, he was buying an ox. Person. Yeah. <laughs> so I spoke like an ox. Person. Mm. You don't understand, huh? No. All right. It's coming. So when this strange remark was reported to the leader of the prayer, then he admitted. He confessed. He said, oh, when I was saying God is the greatest, I was thinking uh, about my farm. And when I got to the phrase like, praise to God, I was thinking of buying an ox person. So it was true. And at that moment, I suddenly heard something strange bellowing like an ox person. So that was a madman. <laughs> <laughs> so do you understand what it is? Yeah? No? Why you need your brow like that? <laughs> what is it that you don't understand? Huh? I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure you understand. Anybody understand? The madman was a master, a wise man. Oh, come on, give me a break. How <laughs> <laughs> else could you know? Just, uh, uh, just uh, reciting the words is not enough. Your heart has to be in the same place. That's right. That's right. Now, people think he's a madman, but maybe he's not, you see? He's just uh, not like them. <laughs> so they think he's a madman. Whoever doesn't go into such a congregation, doesn't go into the church, doesn't offer prayers together with everybody, they think he's mad. And they are trying to convert him, take pity upon him, want to save his soul, save his understanding about God and all that stuff. Love thy neighbor. But this madman actually, he could not bear it, you know. If he goes in there, he, he would <laughs> move like a cow person. <laughs> because Probably that's what they do. Or another day, maybe he would chip like a bird person. If <laughs> if the prayer leader was thinking of buying a bird person or feeding a bird or something, then maybe he just attuned to that. So because he's so sensitive, yeah, he can see through people's hearts, and people think he's a madman, yeah, because he doesn't do what they do, like going to the church and singing out loud and, and you know, praying like those people. Hmm? Yeah, and those people were supposed to be very holy, leader of the group and priests and all that, but they did not truly concentrate on what they were doing. That's what it is. So the the bottom line here is that it's your heart that counts. Yeah? Okay. Yeah, you can go to the church, but then you have to concentrate. You know? The same when you go on retreat and all that. If uh, your energy... Your mind is not concentrated on here, then you will be a kind of disturbance, because our energy has to be like one, you know? Everybody, one goal, and everybody has to think in the same direction, concentrate and let go of all the mundane stuff. But if your uh, mind is not set on that, then you will be like a sore thumb. You're sticking out and uh, disturbing other people, you know, the sensitive ones. The non-sensitive, maybe not, but the sensitive ones, maybe. Because you're not one with what you're doing. You're not one with the congregation. You are here, but you're not here. Yeah. Anyway, sometimes I see people stick their head through the window there, but they're not really looking at me. After a while, I look at him, he's not there. He's looking, <laughs> hoping the cloud will fly through the... The, the ceiling or something, looking at the ceiling, you know, or the scaffolding, something like that. So what's the point of sticking the head through the window there, like the custom of the barber today, how long is the wait? <laughs> Make sure that the barber is busy and then he's doing something else. Sometimes I tell you, as a joke, but in reality it's like that. Some people don't concentrate on what they're doing. They don't value what they have got, you know? Uh, sometimes coming just for fun, or just to be in a crowd, or just to spot a, a blonde or something, who knows? <laughs> or maybe a choco. <laughs> Are you looking for a choco? <laughs> yeah. 
So this is a, like a funny thing that we have read, but it can apply to us also. Of course, sometimes your mind wonders. Your mind wonders. It's normal eh, sometimes. But it's not like you come here with that intention on purpose. Come here just to, to be in the crowd or to, to have fun or why not? <laughs> you know, or nothing better to do or bored or something like that. Do you understand me? Yes. Yeah? Then it is very bad for you and bad for other people as well. You come here and you ruin the good atmosphere of other people who have been working hard to achieve it. Yeah? You come here with a low intention and it's very disturbing. It can be like piercing your skin, that kind of energy, or very disturbing, like you would touch people with your hand or pulling them or punching them or poking them, things like that. It's that disturbing, disturbing like that. I mean, almost physically like that, and make people feel not right, agitated. So sometimes, uh, even though you see the person doesn't do anything, but that's only physical. Yeah? If you see what he's doing inside, then it's the worst thing you can see. Because sometimes a people's minds are very, very coarse, not very uh, pure. And it can be very disturbing, especially when all things are calm and pure in a retreat like that. Then you can feel it more acutely. Like if the brother's clothes are white, if you just sprinkle a drop of ink on it, it will show right away, because it's white. So like in the retreat, the atmosphere is very pure and quiet. And if one or two or three or four of you are not pure enough or came here with the low motive, just to join the crowd and things like that, or something else in the head, then it's very, very uh, disturbing for other people. Eh? And for me also, of course. And these things you don't see. These things you don't see. If somebody like stab somebody with a knife, then you see it. It's blood coming out and people are screaming and you can see the wound. But if somebody does similar things with the energy, you don't see. That's a problem. But do not think that uh, stabbing it with a knife is worse than the thing with the energy. No. The energy stabbing is worse because nobody sees it and no sympathy, nothing. If you should stab somebody in, in the arm and it's bleeding, everybody would come, oh, sorry, what's wrong? Let's take her to the doctor. Let's help her. Let's be careful. And everybody take care with tenderness and all that. But if you are disturbing people with your low energy or cause energy, nobody sees anything. And when that person gets agitated or something, you, you blame that person. You say, oh, why you get mad for nothing? Nobody did anything to you. <laughs> because the energy is the thing you cannot see. And sometimes you can see, it depends on how open you are. So make sure your inside is clean, okay? Not just the clothes, not just washing your face every day, but wash inside. Eh? And if you have any low motive to come here, uh, you better check it out and change it. Any questions? No. Ah, uh, okay, good. You know, I just forgot one joke in that book. I don't know how. I forgot it. <laughs> so maybe I'll tell you. <laughs> it's getting too serious. We gotta joke a little. <laughs> you know. There were two people who went on a blind date. You know what a blind date is, yeah? Sometimes in a computer, <laughs> my name is so-and-so, <laughs> how tall, how big, <laughs> I'm looking for a man or a woman, blah, blah. And of course, they don't know each other very well. Or sometimes friends arrange two bachelors to meet each other, and they didn't know each other before. Sometimes they didn't even see their face before. It's just a blind date. It's really a blind date. So there were two people who went together on a blind date, a man and a woman, of course. And after all, they were so bored, so bored, you know, it's a boring blind date. Uh, suddenly, uh, one friend, a friend of his, called him on the phone, and he stepped from the table of the restaurant, went outside and talked with a friend for a while. And after he came back, he said to his uh, female blind date, I'm sorry, <laughs> my grandfather died. I had to go. 
Okay. <laughs> so the woman, very understanding. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> very good. If your grandfather didn't die, my must <laughs> must die. <laughs> <laughs> good, huh? <laughs> okay. I thought there was a very good one. <laughs> okay. All right then. <laughs> Meditate again or sleep, whatever. <laughs> Are you okay still? Yes. yes. Not very tiring sitting all day, all night? No, it's okay. No? getting really good now. Truly? Yeah. Yeah? Uh-huh. You all have the leaning, that's why, right? It, the sleeping has been good, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, only when I'm in here, with a lot of light and a lot of people, and you don't meditate, so your temperature rises up. But if you're alone in here, you know, without the interference of this woman <laughs> and no light, then your temperature sinks down and then you're very calm, just the right temperature. Yeah, this weather is very nice, really. Yes. It's just very nice. The first day I came, I felt so nice, so peaceful. Okay, have a good night. <laughs> sleep, good sleep, okay, thanks. Remember God, you are divine. Have a good night.